what is the logarithm of a complex number? As you expect, it will be defined as the inverse of the exponential function. But this will immediately lead to a new problem. The exponential function as a complex function is not a one-to-one -one function as its real counterpart, but a many-to-one function. And it means that the inverse will become a one-to-many function, a so-called multivalue function. And that will be the start of quite a lot of complications. And we will encounter the first complications already in this first video. So, what is the idea for the log of z? Well, we write w equals the log of z and we see it as the inverse of the exponential function. That means that we'll, uh, we will have e to the power w equals z. I want to find w for all values of z. Well, we have already seen how we can solve such equations. We rewrite z in its polar form as norm of z times e to the power i, that's the argument of z. And then we rewrite that into one exponential. We can write the ln of the norm of z as e to the power ln of z, and then form one exponential. And then we see we have something on the form e to the power w equals e to the power something else. And that means that w has to be equal to this something else. And that is how we define our log. We define our log of z as the ln of the norm of z plus i times the argument of z. It's a small a here, and we know this argument is not unique. We can make it unique if we choose the capital A argument of z, where the capital arc of z is between minus pi and pi. But we know that we can always add a multiple of 2 pi i. So we see the small log with the small l z equals the ln of the modulus of z. That part is fine, just the real ln and the real uh, norm, plus i times the argument with the capital I, also fine. But well, then the nasty stuff comes in. Then we have the k times 2 pi i, where k is arbitrary. Of course, we can say, well, let's solve this problem by setting capital log of z, where we uh, define a capital log of z where we choose k equals zero. So we choose a particular branch. We set k to zero and then we have a one-to-one -one function. All problems solved, right? So we use the capital log of z and where we say, well, we don't use any argument. No, for the capital log of z we do use the principal value of the argument. We'll call this uh, log the principal value of the log. So let's try some computations. Because, well, all seems fine now, right? Just use the capital log of z and your function becomes one to one and all problems are solved. Or not? Let's see. So we choose the argument between minus pi and pi. And what happens if we compute, for example, the log of minus one plus i? If we want to compute the log of a complex number, we need its modulus and we need its arguments. Well, modulus is easy. It's minus 1 squared plus 1 squared equals 1 plus 1 equals 2, and then the square root, so the ln of the square root of 2. And what about the argument? Well, we have minus 1 plus i, so we have an angle of 3 pi over 4. So the small uh, arc will be 3 pi over 4 plus any multiple of 2 pi i, and that gives our small log of minus 1 plus i. Well, if you have the small l log, then it's easy to compute the capital L, just plug in k equals zero, and there we have our capital log of minus one plus i. So, no problems yet. What happens if we compute minus one plus i squared? Well, that's not so hard. Minus one plus i squared, minus one squared equals one, plus i squared equals minus one, so cancel out, uh, and double product yields minus two i. So, we if we compute the capital log of uh, minus one plus i squared, that means that we have to compute the uh, uh, capital log of minus 2i, and that yields the ln of 2, so the norm, uh, plus i times the capital argument well for the uh, minus 2i, the argument is minus pi over 2. So there we have the capital log of minus 1 plus i squared. Now, it would be nice if we could put the 2 
in front, over there. Well, is that possible? Well, let us see what happens if we compute two times the capital log of minus 1 plus i. Over here, we have the log of minus 1 plus i, twice that quantity over here. And then we know 2 times the ln of the square root of 2, you can take the 2 to the power, so you get the square root of 2 squared equals uh, 2. So we have the ln of 2 over here and over here, so that part is fine. But then if we compare the imaginary parts, we get over here a 3 pi i over 2 and here a minus pi over 2. So what happened? The capital log of minus 1 plus i squared is not equal to the twice the capital log of minus 1 plus i. So this familiar rule which we always had from a real analysis like log of a squared is 2 times the log of a does not hold anymore. So that is quite a problem. So the, if you, you define the log as the capital log, it becomes one to one, that is fine. But now all of a sudden our familiar rules do not hold anymore. So why is that by the way? What's happening here? Well, the argument of a capital log should always be, be between minus pi and uh, pi. Well, from the, uh, for the log of minus 1 plus i, our argument was 3, three pi over 4. And when we did this twice, we got 3 pi i over 2, which was outside of this range. So we had to add a factor 2 pi i somewhere in order to fix this problem. And that is why they are not equal anymore. So, okay, if you take your capital log, you remove one problem, the multivalueness, but you get other problems back. If so, main message, if you have complex logarithms, we can work with them. We have the definitions over there, but you really need to be very, very careful.